Okay. Hey, this is Quinn from Williams, your favorite plumber, here to talk about the three most common types of residential heating system, pros and cons, and what application we choose to install. We've installed all three, so I'm here to give you the most unbiased opinion out there. Let's get started. We're gonna explore hydronic heating systems, forced air, and ductless mini splits. Let's start with hydronic heating systems. What is a hydronic system? A hydronic system uses a boiler, circulating pumps to pump hot water through your floors, radiators, or baseboards to heat your home. So what are the pros here? The biggest pro is its operating cost. Your monthly utility bill with a hydronic system is gonna be cheap compared to the other systems. It's roughly 30% more efficient than traditional systems. That's because transferring heat through fluid is extremely efficient. Second pro, and one of my favorite, is the uniform heat envelope or distribution of the heat. So in a radiant in-floor system, you're transferring the heat uniformly throughout the full thermal mass, and that is making it really comfortable. So if you're on one side of the room, it's gonna be the same temperature as the other side of the room. Um, you're not getting 110 degree air right out of a register, and then it's cold on the other side of the room like a forced air system. The third pro, it is a cozy heat. You know, when you're getting out of that shower on a cold winter day and you're stepping onto that tile and it's heated, mm, it's nice. And lastly, noise. I mean, the systems are quiet. So when you walk into a room, you have to look at the thermostat to see if your heating system's on. Let's look at hydronic heating cons. The first con is the initial investment. So boiler systems and the distribution piping are not cheap. On a residential entry level size, can be a 12K for just the mechanical room piping plus 7K in distribution. The initial investment is high. Okay, like any advanced heating system, there's more moving parts. So your maintenance cost is gonna be more important and a little bit higher than traditional forced air systems. The last con is you it's a dry heat, and when you're in a dry environment like we are here in Montana, you don't get the opportunity to add moisture to the air through your boiler system, so you're gonna have to use room humidifiers or some other system. The last con, that air in those long winters can get stale, and so you're gonna have to open a window anyway. Let's talk about forced air systems next. A forced air system uses something like a furnace to heat the air and circulate it through ductworks using the warm air as the median to transfer heat. The first pro of forced air is the initial investment, right? It's the most economical of the three systems. The original investment can be 7K for the furnace and piping, and then maybe another 4K for the ductwork in your house. Second pro is that you have the opportunity to filter it through electronic filters or pleated filters to increase that indoor air quality. Although improving the indoor air quality can be a pro, if those filters go untreated, you're gonna be circulating allergens, so that can also be a con. The next pro to an HVAC forced air system is that you can do inline humidification. So you can add humidity to your whole house. So in dry climates like Montana, you can bring that comfort level to the whole house without external solutions. Let's look at forced air cons. The first con and my biggest con for forced air is the noise. My last house, I had a furnace right under my master bedroom and uh, I think it was sized incorrectly. We didn't do the installation. And so it sounded like when that thing kicked on in the middle of the night, my whole bed vibrated and the wind coming out of those registered sounded like hurricane winds. Even on correctly sized systems and even the newer operating units, you can still hear them kick on and that air flowing. So noise is a big one, big con for me on the HVAC side. Second con is uneven air distribution. So you have the hottest air coming out of the registers at say 110 degrees circulating around the house. So you have really hot air by the registers and then you could have cold air you know, by the windows or the other side of the room. So you don't have a consistent temperature distribution throughout the room. Like I said earlier, if you ignore your maintenance on your filters, that can actually make your allergens worse because if your duct works dirty, it's blowing around all those allergens and dust to make it a nightmare for anyone with allergies. Lastly, let's talk about ductless mini split systems. A ductless mini split system, also known as a mini split, is a compact split system air conditioner or heat pump. And like the forced air, uses an inside unit and an outdoor unit. The main difference is with how the energy is transferred. In forced air, the median is air. In a mini split system, it's transferring that heat or cooling through refrigeration lines. So it's a more efficient transfer. 
these are relatively new to the industry, um, especially in the United States. They've had these overseas forever, but it's really catching steam, at least here in Montana recently. One of my biggest pros of these systems is in a retrofit remodel scenario. Oftentimes we see a bonus room that's above a garage, gets way too hot in the summer, way too cold in the winter, and there's not enough space to run any duct work or, uh, or piping, so this is a great application. You simply get the outdoor unit mounted, run the refrigeration lines on the outside of the house, pop into the head, and boom, you got AC and heat to that room. The second pro is its efficiency. Like Hydronic, it's transferring its heat and cooling through refrigeration lines rather than air, so it's gonna be more efficient. Let's look at the cons for a ductless mini split system. The first con is the initial investment. Like a boiler, it's about 30% more expensive than a traditional forced air system. Second con is that the installation calculations on your heat load and cooling load have to be dead on. You can check out our other videos on how to do the manual J if you're a DIYer looking to do this yourself. Um, but if the calculations aren't made exactly, your units are gonna short cycle, you're gonna lose efficiency and uh, wear and tear on your equipment. One of my biggest cons to these units is the aesthetics. So the cassette or head is still bulky right now. They're making a lot of improvements, they're doing drop-ins, but right now the look of the unit in the room is not too classy. Another con for the ductless mini split is you're not getting that outdoor air and you're not circulating the air. So you're losing the ability to filter the air and also add humidity, similar con to the hydronic system. Lastly, one big thing that we fight in a colder environment like Montana is our winters get really cold. We get sub 20 below temperatures. And when you get below 15 degrees, even with a cold weather package on these ductless mini splits, you're gonna lose your heating output. So that can be a con and something you have to really take a look at in colder environments. All right, in summary, what do I recommend? I'm gonna cop out and say it depends on the application. The best application for an economical system that provides both heating and cooling is gonna be forced air. But as a plumber, I do love me some hydronic heat. So for the luxurious, you know, getting out of the shower and your feet are warm for an efficient feel, I love hydronic heating and that's one of my favorites. And lastly, the ductless mini split system has been a lifesaver for remodels and retrofits to provide heating and cooling to systems that aren't zoned quite correctly or additions to homes that isn't worth running additional ductwork. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Give us a thumbs up if you like the video, subscribe, post a comment. I wanna hear what you think is your favorite system. And also, if you have any specific technical questions, post them below and we can try to get them answered. Thanks for watching.